Hey everybody, Bungzi here with another ultralight review on ultralight backpacking. Today we have my next short in my cooking series. If you're just jumping in, circle back and check out my two installments on my recommended spork and the second one being my favorite piece of cooking gear. I've included a couple of links in my video description uh, down below in case you missed them. Today though, we're talking fuel. In particular, my favorite type of fuel and why. Shall we? I love Esbits. That's right, those little smelly solid fuel cubes. Yeah, they're a little stinky. Let's get that out of the way, no denying it. But what isn't stinky when you're out there for days? So why do I love these? Let me count the ways. Number one, they are arguably the lightest fuel source. One package cube like this will heat enough water to rehydrate a meal, plus enough left over to heat water for a hot drink if used in conjunction with a good cooking system, which I'll get to in my next cooking video. Now, each package cube weighs 0.5 ounces, so 0.5 ounces per hot meal. Super simple, easy to plan for. Now, when considering the fuel weight, it is important to take into account not just the weight of the fuel at the start of your trip, but the weight of your fuel throughout the trip. Let me explain. This plays out actually in two ways. First off, with Esbits, you only have to pack as much fuel as you need, as opposed to the more common fuel canister, where you have to pack an entire fuel canister whether you need all that fuel or not. So, some of the fuel weight in your kit is unnecessary. In fact, if, you tri if your trip is longer, you, might, you, may act to, you may have to actually pack two fuel canisters just to play it safe. Sticking with weight, you also need to take into account the weight of the fuel storage itself. The plastic blister pack um, around an Esbit cube weighs next to nothing, it, uh, nothing according to my scale, but obviously there's some weight there. In comparison, a fuel canister, a small fuel canister, weighs about five ounces empty. That's five ounces of excess weight that you have to carry in and carry out. A larger fuel canister weighs even more, obviously. That's at least five ounces of fuel storage I don't have to carry if I go with Esbit. Plus, however many ounces of excess fuel I don't need to carry around either. Esbits are also relatively cheap. They cost about 67 cents each, and you can get them cheaper if you buy in bulk. I've included a couple links for you in my video description down below. And again, as we just discussed, there is no waste with Esbits. Take and use what you need. With fuel canisters, you're often left with a canister with fuel in it, which is pretty much a waste of money. Now, moving on, esbits are also more foolproof than fuel. A fuel canister or its attached stove can malfunction and leak. You can lose much or even all of your fuel in the blink of an eye. Not with esbits. There is nothing to leak. Another benefit is that you can't break an esbit. Unlike can a canister stove set up, which can pretty easily break or clog up if you spill on it. I'd also argue that esbits are safer. They don't spill or leak like liquid fuels or canisters. For good and for bad, they actually take a few seconds to catch a light, FYI, not so easy. They're not very combustible like liquid fuel or gas either. This will not explode. <laughs> esbits are also good in extreme conditions like higher altitude and below freezing conditions. Not all fuel sources are. One more benefit of an esbit. If campfires are allowed, you can also use an esbit or a piece of your esbit as a fire starter. Um, you can't do that with a fuel canister. So be sure to pack an extra cube or two for campfires. Now, there is a bit of an art to esbits. If you want to get a good cook out of an esbit, you do need the right stove setup. And in my next video, we'll discuss just that, my favorite stove setup. One more note on esbits. When there are burn bans in place in dry regions, you are often required to only use fuel sources that can be turned off, which limits you pretty much to canisters. Personally, I think a canister represents more risk to the environment than an esbit, but hey, I don't make the rules. In a later video, I'll therefore also cover my favorite canister stove setup for when esbits are off the table. So if you're more of a canister kind of person, stay tuned, I'll get to you as well. Well, that's all the time I need. As I mentioned, be sure to catch the next short in this series on my recommended stove setup. 
In the meantime, as always, please help me grow the show by hitting like and clicking on the Bungsy logo floating on the screen to subscribe. It helps me a ton. Thanks, and I'll catch you on my next ultralight review on ultralight backpacking.